What's up, everyone? So this is going to be a really quick spinoff kind of video, but I wanted to show real quick when I look someone up, like, <laughs> to see if they told, basically, um, how I do it. And there's a ton of different ways to do it. There's actually a good amount of stuff that you look at or you look for. Um, sometimes you can find concrete evidence that definitely says that, hey, this dude's, you know, this is what they did. Um, other times it's just kind of, that's not how it works sometimes. Hey, it's inferred sometimes, but if we're checking paperwork in prison, like it needs to be in black and white. In my opinion, I'm not going to say that someone, you know, ratted unless I can see it in black and white that says they did. Um, and I just happened to see this article. The article is the Irishman jailed over a role in notorious dark net drug marketplace, Silk Road walks free, right? So I looked at this article and I'll do a video on this guy. You know, that's awesome that, that he's getting out, you know, and I was, and, and I'm very careful about who I bring to you guys. Um, in the same way, like in prison, I was very careful about who I talked to. And I know I've done videos on this in the past about giving interviews and being careful who I do interviews with, but. Um, so I was like, let me look this guy up, right? Let me see who he is and, and if he's worth doing a video on. So, so the first thing I do, right, is I take his name, see Gary Davis, right? He's 35. So we plug it in to the Federal Bureau of Prisons inmate locator. And I found a bunch of them. But basically, when I looked him up, what I found was, you know, there's only a few Gary Davises. Um, and obviously, you know, He's not black, so it's this guy, right? <laughs> so the reason I do this is because now I have his BOP number. I have a release date. I have some facts, a little bit more substance to who I'm looking up, right? I want as much info as I can, but this is my first step um, in this journey of, of looking him up. So I, you know, I have his, I have some of his info now. So the next thing I want to do is. You know, I want to go to Pacer and I want to plug in his name. If you plug in Gary Davis on Pacer, it's like plugging in John Smith. You're going to come up with a ton of stuff. Um, so that didn't work for me that well. So I used a little bit of Google Foo um, and I ended up coming across this right here, which was another article that has his case number, right? Has, you know, where his case was, which is in the Southern District of... New York, um, and we can confirm it's the Gary Davis we're looking for, you know, Silk Road guy. So now we have this information. So we just take this right here and we plug that into Pacer. <clears throat> How you use Pacer, all that stuff. I'm not going to cover that right now. Oh, maybe I will because it just logged us out. Oh, it didn't log us out, but it removed our, our thing. So, all right. So we'll go find cases, put in our case number. Well, that's not the case number. Back over here. And this, the the case number, you would expect the name to be Davis, right? But it's, you know, it's not, we're going to say criminal court, search. So now you see these, none of these look like him, right? None of these are Davis. None of these are Gary Davis, right? So one of the things that we saw over here was Southern District, New York, right? We come back over here, and we know that it was in 2008-ish. So we come back over here, and the only Southern, like New York, Southern District is right here. So this is probably our dude, right? Now there's a, there's a couple of these, and et al just means and then. It's like additional parties to the criminal complaint. So it's not just this guy, he's in a criminal conspiracy where there's other people. That's what that means. So when I click on this, it brought me to this page. It didn't bring me here, it brought me to another page, but then I hit search and, and it brought me to this page. Um, so this is the criminal docket for all defendants that are in this case, right? And we can see, you know, we can see the, the lawyer who is represented by, who the you know, main guy is or whatever. And then we scroll down, see all the charges. We'd see what the sentence was for each one. We'd see represented by disposition is like the judgment represented by 
says the USA. So there's not going to be a disposition for them. Um, so, okay, so now we have we have all these, these are all different documents that, like if I'm trying to figure out uh, what's up, who you are, um, and like if you told, like I'm going through all these, some of these might be 100, 200, you know, pages. Like it's no, it's no joke. There's a, there's a lot of stuff to this. For me, I, I ended up going through all these and I kind of know after doing this for so long, I can look at the docket and I can see interesting things right off the bat because I've done this a lot. I've spent a lot of money on Pacer. So you get like 300 pages for free and then after that they charge you. Um, and it's, it's like 10 cents a page. It adds up quick. I've gotten $700 Pacer bills. Uh, it's, it's a real thing. So, but it describes everything. You know, you can see the steps of everything in the particular case. So for me, I had kind of went down um, and read everything and I got to um, item number 99, I think it was. So right, where was it? And like a lot of people like see stuff like this, sealed document and they freak out. They're like, oh, it's sealed. It's like, so a lot of times they'll seal medical stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so it's not always a red flag, but you know, sometimes, sometimes it can be, um, so yeah, 99, <clears throat> oh no, maybe it was a 99, it was a different one. Um, which one was it? Oh, 82. Yeah, I think it was 82. Sentencing submission by Gary Davis and then his exhibits. So basically a lot of times it goes a sentencing memorandum, um, Basically, this is him or like his lawyers in this case saying, hey, listen, you know, he's a good guy. You shouldn't give him a bunch of time. Like, here's why. Um, and if we come over, so, you know, if we click on this, it would it would load this, but I already opened it up. So here we go. So sentencing memorandum, like I said, right. Um, and this is just basically his lawyers. Um, you can see here, table of contents. This is his lawyers saying, you know, why he shouldn't get a million years. Like the United States is going to say, this guy's a demon. Um, and, and you know, the, your attorney is going to say, hey, this guy's a saint. And that's just <laughs> that's how the game's played. So I had actually went through this, and this is like 100, 115 pages, yeah. So, I mean, I got three quarters of the way through this, and I had found, you know, you go through it, and it's, you know, it's the guy's whole life story, and, and like, I'm, I'm not going to really put him, I'm not going to go through this whole thing. Put him on blast like I, i'm not trying to put out his whole life story like that it's all public information you can go check it for yourself but with stuff like this you have to read the whole thing and that's what you do if you're checking paperwork you read the whole thing and but you need to know all these different things to look for you know um i had mentioned it before like the 5k1 letter stuff like that another good thing um is if we look up control f i put in proffer put in earlier um you see here so we fully appreciate so this is they're talking about another uh defendant in this case uh we fully appreciate the government's views noah is less culpable than gary because nash had more minor role blah, 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 blah. okay okay we know we know however that both gary and nash provided information to the government as part of a safety valve proffer Although Gary was open and honest with the government during his two days of proffering, the government ultimately found that Gary was not safety valve eligible because his role as site administrator in Silk Road. So this dude spent two days just snitching and, you know, just saying, you know, spilling his guts and telling them everything about everything. You know, this person did this and that person did that and and this is who we put in charge of this. And this is who I talk to on a daily basis. And this is how they do this. And this is how they do that. It's not a inconsequential thing. You know, um, that two days was, you know, he was, he was telling his ass off for two days. <laughs> we see like up here, another co-defendant, you know, Andrew Michael Jones pleaded guilty pursuant to a cooperation agreement so we can see in here you know they, they they'll let you know because they have to like a lot of people are like oh they they protect informants they protect you know <laughs> they a lot of times they don't man because at the end of the day like all this stuff has to be documented these documents are going to help the judge decide what sentence this guy is going to get so 
if if he told like they have to put that in there if they want credit for it you know um this one way that it happens there's other more sneaky ways that people can tell and that, that's something i definitely i have a few people that i'm gonna i gonna put on blast in a little bit with that safety valve proffer but like what's a proffer right like what's a proffer sam like like you say that but like you know how do we know it doesn't say snitching right it doesn't say he's telling on people right it just says proffer and i know when i first when i first um when i got my case um my lawyer had asked me do you want to come in and give a proffer and i was like what's a proffer because i had never heard this term before you know um, she's like, oh, like you come in and you tell people, you know, you tell like you tell the you know United States attorney like what's what and who you worked with and what you did and when you did it and who you did it for and and how things worked and all that. And I was like, man, like I was like, that sounds like snitching to me. And she's like, we don't call it that. You know, <laughs> stop. <laughs> so, anyways, when I see this this word, it's it's that's basically replace it with snitching. And it's like, yeah, right. Well, how do you know that, Sam? It's like, you know, we come over here. And it's free. You know, here's the, the the dictionary definition of it. You know, a proffer is an offer made prior to any formal negotiations. In a trial, to proffer is to offer evidence in support of an argument or elements of an affirmative defense or offense. So it's giving evidence. And that's exactly what the feds mean when they say it. They, you know, technically you can, pro like, I could say, um, you know, this is a tablet and I just proffered. I offered you some evidence. Does that mean I told on someone? No, it doesn't. Um, but in my opinion, like if you're if you're doing it for two days, um, right off the bat, it just him, it's saying that he proffered like in my book, like if he was if if he came in, you know, he came in and we had we had checked his paperwork. Um, and I saw this in his paperwork. I'd be like, this this guy told. And that's that's the that's the synopsis I'd give like to my homeboys, you know, uh, the dudes in the 03A car or the you know, mass guys. Um, that's what I'd tell them. I'd be like, listen, this dude's a, a fucking rat. And at the end of the day, um, that'd be that. Like, you know, he wouldn't be eating with us, that's for sure. But anyways, and every every prison's different, every you know, it's, they're all different. But my point was I wanted to show you guys, we had talked about this before, and it was a unique case because you really don't see the 5K1 letter here. Look up here, you know, um, you know, 115 pages. I mean, it's no, this is no, this is no joke, you know? Um, and this is like all his evidence, why he shouldn't get, you know, a million years. Um, there wasn't really a million years, but you get my point. Um, but, you know, the point is that you you go through and you're very methodical with it. It's not something that you could just hop on and instantly be like, oh, this guy's this is it. And like by you doing that, by you saying, like, if I said that and that wasn't the case and he didn't tell, now I'm liable. And I'm you know, I'm liable to get stabbed or 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 beat up or, you know, sent up top or whatever. Like which you know, means I force you into your PC if you if you decide to go. You know, there's definitely dudes who are like, I ain't going. <laughs> and, you know, um, but you, you better be ready to, uh, better be ready to really um, back that up. But I never put myself in a position where I got into that, you know, uh, to that point. So that was kind of disappointing, man. It always sucks finding out dudes got bad paperwork. But anyways, um, I, th I just thought it was interesting. Thought I'd share with you guys. In any case, see you guys in the next video.